in 1908, my father, Mr. Charles Bravarnik, and my mother, Pearl Gornstein, who were born in Ukraine, came to London as part of the vast Jewish immigration in the early part of the century. In 1909, they had Anne, which is not our concern. Soon enough, Pearl Gorenstein became pregnant with her second child, and that's whom we are concerned about. That baby was none other than me, Mr. Herbert C. Brown. Well, let's first look at my name. Are you not curious where Brown came from? How can Brovarnik and Gorenstein turn into Brown? Well, the answer is pretty simple. My grandfather's name had been anglicized to Brown, and the family stick to it. Now, let's look at me. The depression of 1920 persuaded my father to enter a business in Chicago, and there, I attended Haven School. I advanced several times and graduated at 12. I was offered several more advancements, but I refused because I did not want to be in the same class as my sister Anne. On graduation, I went to Englewood High School. Unfortunately, however, my father, Mr. Brovarnik, became ill and died in 1926. I was forced to leave school to work in my family store. However, I wasn't really interested in business and spent most of my time reading. My mother then agreed to run the store while I went back to school. I re-entered Englewood High in 1929 and graduated in 1930. In Englewood High School, I ran the humor column of the school paper and even won the national award. Upon graduation, I had no hope of going to college because of the current depression happening at that time. Our store was sold and I had to look for decent employment. However, I could not find any. I entered Crane College with the intention of going into a career in engineering. But when I tried chemistry, I get so fascinated that I never went out. In 1933, Crane College announced that it would close down due to lack of funds. And so, I had no choice but to go to Lewis Institute and attend a night school while working as a part-time shoe clerk. At that time, Dr. Nicolas Cheronis, one of the instructors at Crane, opened his labs to several lucky students, including me. In the laboratory, I met and fell in love with Sarah Balen, who was the brightest student at Crane. Well, prior to my arrival, in 1934, Wright Junior College opened, and in 1935, I and my fellow students became the college's first graduating class. During that same year, I was able to enter University of Chicago and complete my college in three quarters and thus receiving my bachelor's degree in 1936. After I graduated, I immediately wanted to find a job and get married. But Julius Stiglitz, a famous organic chemist during that time, convinced me to pursue graduate studies and become a research chemist. After I finished graduate school, Sarah gave me a copy of Alfred Stock's book, The Hydrides of Boron and Silicon. 
this book captured my interest and I began to research actively in this field. I and Sarah secretly got married on February of 1937. But apparently, marriages are published in newspapers and our marriage was known eventually. I received my PhD in 1938 and tried to find a job in the industry. But then, I just ended up in the academy instead. My researches covered physical, organic, and even inorganic chemistry. And I taught in these three areas. But I had to choose only one. And for me, it was the field of organic chemistry. While at Wayne University, I started my research on steric effects. I was a very active professor and a pioneer researcher. In 1947, I was hired as a professor at Purdue University and continued my work on steric effects and electrophilic aromatic substitution. And I resumed my research on the chemistry of borohydrides and aluminohydrides. In 1956, I discovered hydroboration, which is considered as the single most important discovery I made. I often joke about my parents' foresight in giving me the initials H, C, and B, which corresponds to the three elements involved in a hydroboration reaction. I also investigated rate ratios of norbornyl derivatives, which led me to doubt the validity of proposed carbocation species following non-classical structures. Non-classical carbocations are proposed to have three center two electron bonds. They are electron deficient chemical bonds where three atoms share only two electrons. This contradicts the classical carbocations where we have a bond consisting of two electrons and are shared only by two atoms. From my observations and studies to the debate between which structure best describes species as diborane and norbornyl cation started. I was an avowed classicist and I pointed out that non-classicists may have overused the newly found non-classical structure that involved the localization of single bonds. I just couldn't accept that these structures could exist and could be stable. Donald Crum and Sowinstein, on the other hand, shift among the non-classicists pushed that the delocalized ion is possible and is the proper explanation to why the norbornyl cation and other similar cations react in that manner. The two sides were really fighting to prove which of the structures was the right one. Recent studies using NMR spectroscopy ended the discussion by proving the existence of the three-membered two-electron delocalized ion. Even though I lost my stand on the classical cation, I until now am still considered as one of the premier scientists who contributed so much to the field of organic chemistry. I received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry together with George Wittig of Heidelberg, Germany in 1979 and it was on pioneering explorations in the field of boron and phosphorus chemistry. Sodium borohydride as a reducing reagent is one of our greatest contributions to organic synthesis and the use of borane in anti-Markovnikov addition in alkenes is also based on my works. I even inspired younger chemists such as Akira Suzuki in his discovery of palladium-catalyzed cross-couplings in organic synthesis. 
Suzuki together with Eiichi Nagichi and Richard Heck also won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for this in 2010.